Hey everyone, we wrote a few tests for our React Native application in Cypher, but are the tests effective? Do they cover all the features of application? We don't know. So the easiest way for us to say if we are done writing tests is to collect code coverage. If we cover all lines, at least we are close to covering all the features, hopefully, if the features are implemented by, by that code. So in order for us to add coverage to our application, I will follow Cypress code coverage guide. You can read this yourself and follow the instructions. But basically, we have two parts to this um, work. First, we need to instrument our application. We have to insert a counter that will tell us how each line, how many times it executes. In order for us to insert the counters, because we're using Babel, we need to install a Babel plugin. It's a dev dependency. It's a Babel plugin. Istanbul. Istanbul is a very popular library for instrumenting JavaScript code on the fly. Okay. Now in our bubble config, we can say plugins and give a name Istanbul. Now we can do it conditionally depending on running variables. For example, we can instrument the code only when running end-to-end -end test. To check if we instrumented the code correctly, I'm going to open our app. Okay. The app is running. Let's open DevTools and check the window variable. If it has a coverage underscore, underscore object, then the code was instrumented correctly. Notice my application code includes app.js. If we extend this object or expand it, then we see every branch, every function, every statement content in the coverage object. Great. So we instrumented the app. What else do we need to do? We need to install the Cypress code coverage plugin, which will extend Cypress with additional functionality. So I'm going to close this. Okay. And I will say npm install dev dependencies Cypress code coverage. Now this plugin comes from a repository and we can see additional instructions for using this. We need to add this line to the Cypress support file and the plugin file. So I will go into Cypress and I will enable support and plugins. So first time I open Cypress again, it will create this folder. Okay. So now I will insert this line into the support file. We don't need anything else. We don't have any custom commands. So I'll remove that file and the plugin file which is something that runs in now that we can use to save things and generate code coverage reports. We'll load this code. Now let's run the actual app and Cypress. We don't have to modify any of the testing code or integration specs. We'll just run it. Notice additional messages. These messages in the log are coming from the code coverage plugin. So it combines code coverage after each test and at the end it generates a report. If you click on the message, it says generate the report in the coverage folder. Let's exit Cypress and look at the coverage folder. Okay, we have reports in different formats. We can send those to third party services, for example. Most important for me as a human programmer is this static HTML code coverage report. Let's look at it. Okay, it's just a page with everything included and it shows top level view of our coverage. So right now we're at 90%. We can have all files and we can drill into those files individually. And for this file, it shows in green the number of times each line or statement was executed. Now, the coverage is not perfectly accurate yet. You know, there are bugs for JSX, for example. It doesn't consider this as an if-else statement, even though it's a conditional ternary. But it's close enough for most cases. So we can see in code coverage that we missed this line completely. None of our tests simulated a network error. So we don't know how application will behave in a real case. Maybe it will crash and burn. So we need to add a test to complete the code coverage in this file. Okay, so here's what I will do. I will start the test again, and I will go back to my spec file, and I will add one more test called handles network error. Okay, so what do we do here? 
We set up a stub and network intercept, but when application fetches users, we're going to force network error as if the server were down. Our application does something. So in this case, it calls console error to log the error. That's observer application. So we're not observing anything inside the implementation. We only want to observe how the application interacts with outside world, including the console. So on load, I will set up a spy on the console error method. The same method we called by the application during error. I can give it an alias and then check that alias to make sure it was called by the application and that, you know, that the loading indicator goes away, for example. The test when we run them should pass. Yeah. I should save the file before it passes, really. Okay. So the test has passed. We can see that our method was called. We can see it was called just once and we can see our network stops. Great. Now let's look at co coverage report and then we reload and boom, we reach 100% code coverage through our end-to-end -end test.